put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. 1991 video game review. Yeah, I'm not throwing that. This is the licensed game for the movie, and thus pretty much follows the plot. So, you know, you have two robots sent back from the future, the T-800 and T-1000, and the T-1000 is out to kill John Connor, the T-800 is there to protect John Connor. And, yeah, that's about it for the game, certainly. This is a side-scrolling shooter, and it's it's a pretty short game actually. If you if you know what you're doing, you know if you if you don't mess up, and basically if you do mess up, you're gonna have to start all over, pretty much. If you if you you know know what you're doing, you could probably complete it in roughly an hour, but it's not gonna be the first hour you play. The game is extremely difficult. Pretty much every level has some sort of challenge and, you know, like a time limit or something that you have to do exactly right, you know. And if you mess up this challenge, then that's pretty much it. A couple of levels allow more than one try. There's this bit where you gotta reprogram the T-800, you know, and the, the, I guess the chip, actually, as seen in the extended, the, the director's cut of the movie. And for that, there, there's like, there, I'm not gonna give it away, but there's more than one stage to the reprogramming. And I believe you get two tries for each stage. Still probably not going to be enough for the first time, but whatever, you know, it's, yeah. There's no password system, there's no, you know, you don't have lives. You have two tries for those couple of levels, that's pretty much it. Any other level, you die, you're dead, that's it, you know, it actually, it cuts to just this image of the desolate future and just says, well, the war's lost, you know, <laughs> nice going. And, yeah, so... Basically, the game just has you, you know, running side to side. You you can walk, you know, unlike other side scrollers, you can watch both walk both, you know, directions. And the sort of the, the camera, the the game screen will follow you, you know. So yeah, and you can shoot either side. You can duck and shoot. You can jump and shoot, and you can shoot upwards, which is really important sometimes, because in the first level, you're actually attacked via the air by those things that you see, I think it's in the first movie, you see these flying HKs, and yeah, those, they're gonna like be dropping bombs on you, so you better not be standing right underneath them, and sometimes they'll like, drop a bomb in your path, so you really gotta watch out for that, but you can shoot them down, you know, so yeah, you start out as John Connor as an adult and you have to get to Skynet and get the, you know, the T-800, get it reprogrammed, and then, you know, after that point, you play as the T-800 for the rest of the game, actually, protecting John Connor, you know, and fighting the T-1000. That's actually really, really cool. If Especially the final level, the climactic battle, is just pure, unadulterated awesomeness. It's still tough, you know, and completing it is just, you grow a third testicle. That's, that's pretty much, it just, you know, if you liked it in the movie, you're gonna like it in the game. You're gonna love it. It, yeah. So, this has very much the, you know, I, 
I think that it's quite fitting that it is this tough. And of course, you know, originally, it, I can imagine that this was like... I think there was some reason for, you know, games back in like the early 90s and the late 80s to be extremely tough. Something about how, I don't know, doesn't matter. But, yeah, so, you know, it is extremely tough, but it... I'd say this is also a game where that really fits, because, you know, the Terminator movies, especially the first two, especially, very especially the first one, it is this just almost impossible battle, and you only, you know, we only win by this tiny little margin, you know, it's, it's extremely close, you know, so, yeah, Terminator game should kick your ass, you know, repeatedly. The there is no real like voice acting or the like, and sound is pretty basic. You know, the various you know sound graphics, the limitations of the controls, all of it you know limited by the the time and the format. You know, I played this on Game Boy. You know, I I can imagine that it was maybe also released for the NES, SNES. So yeah. You know, you got the two buttons, and one of them's actually used to jump. Although in this one, that actually makes sense. You know, it's not like in the Power Rangers one where pressing up does nothing. In this, pressing up makes you aim up, you know. And also, I, I spoke about how you can, you know, you can duck and shoot and, you know, shoot either side. The first level, you've got T-800s coming out of the woodwork and just trying to, you know get at you. It's not, you know, it's not a big deal if they actually do get at you. They're not gonna, like, throw you around or tear you apart like they might in the movies, but, you know, touching them hurts you and getting shot by them hurts you, and yeah, they're gonna come from either side, and sometimes they'll be, like, just slightly up. There, there are a bunch of, like, I guess stairwells, sort of, in the game, where you have to jump from step to step, and this isn't really inherently dangerous, but enemies might come down from those steps and, you know, you have to watch out how high up they can shoot, if they can still shoot you, you know, and maybe it'll be good to, you know, crouch down and stuff. One important thing to note about the health bar is you got one health bar. The health you leave the first level with is the health that you start, you know, I don't remember exactly the number, but the next time you have a health bar, you don't have a health bar for the reprogramming thing. That's essentially the world's most evil game of pipes, you know, essentially. You just, you gotta connect these wires, and yeah, I just, that's an awful part of the game. It's extremely frustrating, but again, really satisfying when you do get past it, you know. But yeah, so you basically... Yeah, the, the health you leave the first level with is the same amount of health you start the next level that you have a health bar in, you know. By the way, the game also has, you know how in the movie, again, th this is not a spoiler for neither game nor the movie, it happens pretty early on in the movie, as well as the game. You ride a motorcycle as the T-800 with John Connor on the back of it and with the, like, Winchester out, you know, and... T-1000's following you in this massive truck, you know, and you gotta avoid him ramming into you, you know, in the game. And, yeah, that's a lot of fun. And, yeah, very, very, just awesome. Really, really cool. As actually, when I played this years ago, that's where the game would, like, bug out on me. And I was just like, no, I was gonna ride a motorcycle with the shotgun that, no, you just... No. But yeah, it's it's well worth earning your way to, because pretty much every level in this game, you know, every level past the first one, you earn your way to, you know. It's there there is no walk in the park in this game. The 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 music has the sort of you know, you you got the theme from the movie <laughs> recreated in very low quality audio, you know, but they tried. You know, it, it sounds essentially the way it should. The one thing I do think that they did quite well is that it doesn't get to be... It, it, it might feel impossible, 
but it never truly is. It's just always a mountain to climb. You know, it's it's Mount Everest, but it is not impossible. So, you know, each time, you know, you just, you gotta keep trying and figure out how, you know, obviously if, if you're not someone who's, you know, I mean, this was made back when, yeah, back when games were extremely tough. So if you're not into that, this is not gonna be a game for you, you know, no matter how much you love the movie, if you're not willing to, you know, lose a bunch of times getting to the victory, this is not a game for you, you know. But, you know, it actually does really satisfy when you, you have this immense challenge and then you complete it. I suppose that more or less covers it. You get to use a sort of submachine gun or assault rifle both as John Connor and as the T-800, though as the T-800, it's actually, it has limited ammo, you know. Fortunately, though, his, the Winchester does not have unlimited ammo, it does have unlimited ammo, so, you know, you can always use that, but you'll want to hold on to the assault rifle, you know. The game doesn't particularly tell the story of the movie. It really is kind of, well, you just watch the movie, so you know everything that happens. You know, now you can play the game and relive, you know, many of your favorite scenes. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't really have, you know, it goes straight from the T-800 going back in time to driving away from the T-1000 on the motorcycle with John there. You know, you don't have the cool shootout at, at the mall, you know, that, yeah. And... Yeah, you know, it's actually kind of... Sarah Connor doesn't particularly appear in this, except as this sort of... I, I don't know if it's supposed to be the tapes she recorded for John, you know, but she has these sort of mission briefings that you've got to find in the levels, you know, and they'll basically tell you this is what you have to do to get through this level. And if you don't get the mission briefing, you know, or you, like, skip the the thing, you might have a lot of trouble figuring out. So sometimes it's right before a level starts. It'll tell you, you know, this is your goal for this mission. And if you don't know the goal, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough, you know. The game does not have a ton of different sort of enemy types. You know, basically, once you're past the you know, stages of John Connor as an adult fighting T-800s, you start fighting SWAT members, and they behave in roughly the same way. You know, they, you can tell that it's not robots from the appearance, but not particularly from the behavior or, like, tactics or something. You know, it's not... So, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward as far as that goes. The, the, the fighting is pretty straightforward. And do note that it's not necessarily a great idea to just decide... I'm going to fight off everything, you know, everything that shoots at me and that I can shoot, I'm going to shoot back. No, that's, that's probably a bad idea. There's way too much of them, you know, way, way too much opposition. A lot of it you just got to rush past, you know. Again, that's very, you know, very fitting for this, for, for the Terminator universe with just, we got to keep moving, you know, if we stop and just, you know, try to, this is not going to be a standoff, this is going to be me weakening the enemy so that I can get past him, and then moving on, you know, we, we gotta, yeah. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I'd also say that, you know, again, with, you know, when, when you're adult John Connor, and when you're the T-800, the movement patterns, you know, the moves that you can do are roughly the same. But again, you can very much tell one of them's adult John Connor in the future, and the other is definitely Arnie, you know. That was also really nicely done, you know, that... Yeah, I suppose that about does it. If you can get it, just, it's awesome. Recommended to every fan of The Terminator, the first two movies, and the you know, the, this type of game. Again, you know, if you grew up with the games of today, 
you'd probably be underwhelmed by the, the the tech here, you know. But I would still say that the gameplay holds up quite well, especially, you know, considering it's a licensed game and yeah, just give, given the the time this was made. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.